We are creating artifacts. All right, Lonnie, tell us about the refi week. Yeah, sure. So the idea of the event is to bring together people from this refi ecosystem. If people are aware of that, it's a uh, stands for regenerative finance. It's an ecosystem of people exploring uh, regenerative financial and economic systems and structures and organizations. Um, and yeah, so the idea is to bring a bunch of those people together and um, co-work, co-live and co-create together for a week. Um, so it kicks off this Friday. Uh, people are coming in and we're going to start the weekend with a giant tree planting um, kind of activation. Um, it's it's in this regenerative village called Traditional Gene Factory, which um, has 30 hectares of land uh, on site um, that they're in the process of regenerating. Um, and so, yeah, I mean, we're going to kick it off with some intros and arrivals. Uh, we're going to then have this tree planting activation and some kind of opening intention setting activities and various things during that opening weekend um and you know an earth party and celebration and party stuff uh, as well um for the weekend and then kicking off um on monday the uh, october 30th uh with the co-working side of the event um where um we're thinking yeah we'll have maybe just some focus time in the morning for for people to co-work uh, but then in the afternoon do some kind of liberating structured open space technology workshops um that anyone can propose um so yeah that's a kind of rough out overview of the event um and i guess my reason for turning up to the call was um just to see if there might be any interesting insights or or cool suggestions for some liberating structures that i haven't used before that could be really interesting to explore with people um on site um i'm familiar with some of the basic stuff uh, you know like one two for all for example is always a useful one uh, I did a cool one with Jeremy in, in Berlin, Regent Unite, called the Eco Cycle. Um, but uh, I've also got a more a more detailed kind of structure of the overview of the of the week in terms of the the structure and the plan and schedule. Um, but um, yeah, just just at this moment, just just thought I'd just introduce it first and and see if there's any high level thoughts uh, about um, yeah what 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 to what to discuss on this call. Uh, you're muted, Jeremy. I think you're trying to say something. I don't know. Oh, good. Clarifying questions. Yeah, I can start. How many people are going to be there? So about 25, 25 to 30 people on site. Um, yeah. And what do they do? Um, they are a mix of refi founders, hackers, builders, professionals, um, and just interested people, I guess, in the refi movement. But um, more of them have have at least a, a, a relatively significant level of knowledge or insight into this ecosystem already. Um, so they're not all total newbies, for example. Um, and so one of the interesting things I was really interested to explore is how can we like facilitate collaborative interactions between the various projects that we're working on. Um, so for example, we've got um, two of the core regions unite people there. Uh, and I'm kind of thinking about, okay, what does it look like to workshop how our organizations could better work together, for example, but um, yeah, in answer to your question, yeah, it's a, it's a mix of, of, of people from the refi um, kind of community. Uh, yeah. I have a clarifying question. So, what can you share what are the concrete outcomes of this event of this gathering i think one of them is just the social capital that it that it brings from actually um uh, meeting with people in real life um and you know uh being together for a week um and so the hope is that 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 social connection and that time for ideation brainstorming leads to new ideas and new collaborative partnerships going forward beyond the week um so that you know we've had a good time together to discuss things to brainstorm and then some interesting ideas emerge and and hopefully some action emerges and some new collaborative partnerships emerge as a result of that um and a renowned sense of being part of brief idao and, and the community that we're um, trying to build cool thank you Yeah, I was going to ask a similar question, I think, um, but I'll just, so I'll just tweak it a little. So the 
are you looking for like at the end of the event so you say social capital but i also heard like trying to get more collaborations is mm. that the that is that what you want the facilitation to lead to because yes. i suppose saying social capital that's going to happen regardless of what you do exactly exactly so is it that you want to kind of the facilitation to increase the amount of social capital or the amount of emergent projects collaborations at the end i think the the yeah like you say i think the social capital will arise regardless just from the fact of, of being together for a week uh but yeah the main thing i'm interested in is what kind of workshops and structures can we introduce to um yeah facilitate collaboration and um yeah get people oh. to um to work together and, and understand the respective projects and and think about synergies and and learn a thing or two is the invitation to everyone and the expectation that's been set that people are showing up looking for collaborations and opportunities or are people showing up to just hang out i think that the, it was very explicit in the event thing that this is a co-creation event I like let's get together and hack something together for a week or just brainstorm or uh, yeah you can do our you, there's some time for individual co-working but let's also think about some collaborative workshops we could do to think about xyz or to um or to yeah to brainstorm co-create together okay last question uh, uh so that sounds like an, a, a container for abundance and that emergence is what we're looking for do you have any particular like significant problems that you're trying to converge on as well for me personally um i am there's a bit of a transition going on in refi dow and there's a chance to kind of rebirth this, this organization um and so yeah i but i'm particularly interested in um how do i redesign refi dow um its organizational structures and and such so that um more, more people can be included in in being a part of that organization um in in various ways so yeah. But is there a collective problem or obstacle that you are running to, into as a group? Yeah, I mean the collective problem of 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 refi is essentially the collective problem. It's it's how can we create new systems, tools, technologies um that support the regenerative future that everyone coming wants to see. Um and so everyone has their own unique projects and ideas of that. Um but yeah, we we refi is, is almost like quite a niche um group of people on the internet who kind of collaborate on these things but actually to to make it have the success in building this regenerative future that we want there uh we need to kind of translate that into tangible results and um tangible action um and so brainstorming on that uh, how we can actually make refi super impactful and, and good for the world um is is definitely a kind of macro meta aim of the um of the event and also all of the work that 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 i'm doing and uh, and we're doing i guess trying to do Time permits. So you said you, there's, it sounds like I've got a number of different asks actually in terms of you know, intention space. There's something around opening intentions, arriving. There's something about setting the container for social capital or social collaboration. And it sounds like there's something around uh, co-working, but it seems like that's less the less tangible. Um, how much time did you want to? Are you wanting to commit for these types of either uh, container setting or to do the whole damn thing? So let's take these specific and in opening intentions and arriving. How much time are you looking to 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 go through that? Um, if I share my screen, I could show you like a rough um overview schedule of the event. That would that be helpful? It gives some some timing kind of blocks um that I've mapped out. Uh, would that be helpful or should do you want me to just say it verbally um it might can help i'm not sure um but how much time like just in a base well it's a week long What's event the so the co-working is um a five five days of that from monday to well kind of actually to thursday um and yeah for time wise we're thinking you know breakfast at like eight o'clock kind of thing and then an opening mm -hmm. circle from uh maybe a half hour opening circle potentially um and then yeah some some individual co-working focus time uh until lunchtime and then have all afternoon uh until about 6 p.m for open space workshops and activities that people can attend um as and when they're interested to attend those um and yeah i guess one of the specific ones i'm trying to look at is um some 
um, my workshop that I'm going to run on terms of um, redesigning refi DAO and uh, looking towards building this regen coordination with regens unite crypto commons association green pill and refi DAO kind of all acting collaboratively and i've kind of mapped out a rough idea of of that session um so there's yeah there's that specific session that i'm hoping to run probably at the beginning of the week to set some intentions but um also open to any other ideas that people have for interesting sessions and structures for for um to experiment with and bring into the week and I'm definitely curious about this session. Like, what are you looking to run? And is that the thing you're looking for advice on, or is it for one of these other things? That's actually in the scope down. Well, I think it's both. I think um, I, I'd be interested to hear, I guess, about um, uh, to get some feedback on the on my current idea for the session I want to run, um, as well as maybe any other overarching ideas for any other kind of fun sessions that I could run or help facilitate during the week or even just introduced during the opening circles and the closing circles. Like um, I know Regents Unite is very good at um, having those opening circles and has, has a few activities that you guys often kind of introduce um, and any ideas in that regard. But I appreciate, I should maybe focus in on one of those, but I don't know, is there anyone that you feel drawn to focus on, Jeremy? Or all the yes. groups? Um, anybody else? Do we have enough information? We got a bunch of asks, uh, I would say. Monty, go ahead and mute yourself and turn off your webcam, but importantly, listen while we chop it up about your help requests. So what have we got? We got a, a coordination workshop thing, which we didn't quite get details on. It sounds like he's got an idea for that. Um, we've got some open space and how to stimulate collaborations. Dan, you asked a question that I think re is really like, to me, like the question, which is like, what is the shared challenge of your community? And Monty said it, but I, if I had to phrase it, I would say it is the problem and challenge around the refi community is actually doing tangible shit, right? To like deliver some impact that you can see, evaluate, and actually um, like lives in the world in an objective way. Anybody else? Yeah. Um, I have an idea. Yeah, so when he mentioned uh, brainstorming, one idea that came to mind is mind spin. It's a tool, I, I've not seen it in the liberating structures, but it's also a tool which, are, which is also a liberating structure that I feel would be useful for this. So I've posted it in the chat box. It's a, a tool you could use to, if you want to move a group into divergent thinking, to come up with ideas outside the ordinary way of thinking or looking at things. So yeah, that's my input. Any other person? Um, about it? Yeah. Could you sorry. tell us a little bit about it, James? Sorry. That, can you give me just like the shortest teaser of what Mindspin sort of contains and how that works? Yeah. So it's 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 kind of it's 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 almost like a card game. So you have card index cards and you break people in groups. And then they begin brainstorming ideas over important questions. You think of an important question that you want to seek an answer to. And then everyone writes random thoughts that come to them, whether it's crazy or not, anything, they just write on index paper. Then the facilitator, and this is in groups. So once everyone has finished writing their ideas, they exchange their papers in the groups. And then another, and then they look through at other ideas suggested by other people and they trigger more ideas and they then at the end of it all the facilitator collects all the cards from the groups and shuffles them like card of death put them on a table for another round of brainstorming um mm -hmm. i've forgotten the other parts it's quite lengthy but mm -hmm. and it's powerful it's a powerful tool for getting you to think outside of the audience. Yeah, cool. A lot of novelty generation, it sounds like. Thank you. 
Sorry, Dan, I stepped on your lap. No, I I want to play this. It looks fucking hilarious. <laughs> Just loads of people slapping the ground. Um, fantastic. I love that. It sounds like a brilliant idea. Uh, yeah, so the, the action of slapping actually triggers and forces people to think, and it's it's fun. It's fun. I'm definitely gonna do it. It's brilliant. Um, I uh, I have a suggestion for yes. Yeah, so I'm noticing two things. Like one is like a events like this often you have like group activities that everyone has to come to such as the closing circle and the open circle and then you have like the open space where there's like people can kind of do whatever they want and uh i think often my observation is that retreats that i've been to like that structured like this it tends to be that uh it's in the open space that you have different liberating structure other liberating structures popping up um so this is a suggestion for a workshop and it would be like backcasting, uh, I think is what it's called. Um, and essentially you start with uh, imagining a future and working backwards from it. So maybe like 50 years in the future and you kind of go and say, okay, cool. Regen's refi has like fucking succeeded. It's amazing. What does the world look like? And then you try and like put paper on the ground and you start building a timeline going backwards. So you're going to say, cool, that happens in 2075. What happened in 2070? What happened in 2060? And you start trying to name the significant events that occurred, but you do it in from the reverse order from the future. And it makes you, it, once you start building this timeline, it's just a really interesting idea of trying to understand like what are the steps to success and what does milestones look like? And um, the nice thing about doing it from backwards is you don't run into this immediate problem of the thing that you're all thinking about all the time which is the problems that you have right now and so it gives you a, a, a different way of getting to of a, a different perspective on things so i'd recommend that as a um potentially a, a group activity actually for everyone uh because it's quite a fun big activity uh uh that, that everyone can and you could even have different people focusing on different timelines parts of the timeline etc Okay, I want to I want to go on this thing. This is called Future Backwards, and um, and just uh, a few tweaks from what Dan said. First, you start. First of all, you can have groups. Okay, so you organize that by groups of four people, five people, and they all work on the same sort of idea. So the idea is you do current situation. You you get that very quickly. What, what where are we now? And, and you start doing, before you do, you go to the future, you go to, to the past, like what led to where we are now. And, and the events are, and, and you're talking about events, right? You're not talking about, uh, you're talking about things that happened and that caused or, uh, or had as a consequence the current situation. You do that for a certain amount of time until you have a good idea of where we are and where you come from. And my variation on this is you have two futures one is the most incredibly beautiful future you can imagine. And the other one is the worst possible future you, you can have. Like it's hell or heaven, basically. So it's not about being reasonable. It's about being completely unreasonable and like finding what is the most beautiful, perfect, wonderful future you can imagine for Rifi and, and, and others. Okay. And then the worst. And then you go, you do what Dan said, you go, backwards from this not necessarily to come to the initial current situation but maybe b before the uh current situation so it's not a, it's not the, the so and if you do this thing this kind of thing you'll have a tremendous amount of uh of information and then because you'll have two four or five groups you 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 make them you gather them and you and you make in, you make them discuss together what their uh, uh, outlook was, how they they envisage the future, and then if you're really in top shape at this moment, you try to do something together. You try to synthesize the the various uh, the various um, works. Yeah, so that's a beautiful exercise. That's for sure. Thanks for adding to that. Right. Right. Thank you, guys. A couple things come to mind for me um, on the topic of like regen coordination. I would love to see the eco cycles for these different groups that you'd like to see collaborate. I would love to see the 
what is the eco cycle? What is the things that refi Dow spends the most of its time and resources and energy doing? And where do those things go? Where do they like belong or where do they currently exist? That's a better description on the developmental arc of the eco cycle from, you know, spending time on ideas that are in gestation and the seed phases. What are the ideas in the current birth phase or what are the activities, you know, just beginning to show green shoots and what are the things that are actually you know identified by the community as like rock solid tangible concrete value and of course what are the things that we need to you know that are in, that we should be mothballing and composting and creative destruction so i'd love to see that exercise sort of mapped out for both refi dow and regions unite and any of these other groups to say to just sort of look at those next to each other and over the top of one another and go, oh, well, that thing that you're trying to start, we might have in a more mature phase or that thing that you're trying to rethink, we just, we rethought or we might have a functional uh, a functional change you might be able to learn from and inspire there. Just so that we can see sort of what's stuck in each other's traps, especially the the rigidity and the, the scarcity traps and see how we might be able to bend each other's thinking towards those problems for one another, right? You know, by seeing what's sort of stuck in those traps, if I'm able to reveal that from the perspective of Regens Unite and just give that information to the guys at Refi Dow, just so they can help me think about it, it just helps include uh, more diversity of thinking towards it and also socializes the, po the problem space so we might be able to see solutions. Um, open space technology, the one thing I would really want to see added to the notion of open space technology as it stands for gathering, is I would love to see somebody stand up and like really have the nuts and go, at the end of this week, I would like to have this. Right? This is this is as tangible as I can get in terms of a deliverable uh, or a problem that I would love to see a solution for or a product that I would love to see a, a mock-up or some thinking towards. I'd love to see somebody drive towards an outcome. And generally speaking, the one thing I was I was just reading the book on open space technology, and uh, the thing that, that this nerd mentions that I I haven't done a good job of helping people to remember. I didn't hardly knew about myself at any rate. Um, is creating documentation of these sessions. So the people that are hosting workshops and sessions could also be responsible to creating some form of just whether it's the minutes whether it's the vibe of the conversation, create some artifact that says, hey, these were the people here that gathered around this topic. This is the conversation that they were at, they had. And these are either the questions that they land that are still under consideration, or these are the answers and any suggestions that come out as a result of that conversation. Um, so that's an interesting space. When I think about ideas and collab, you know, I just want to like reveal I, I I would want a tangible challenge as quick as possible. Yeah. Sorry, Jeremy, I'm going to jump in quick and say, yeah, I'm, I think that uh, I love your naming of tangibility. And I think that given the group as a bunch of different leaders of different projects, I think one of the things we could say is that maybe instead of connecting it to open space, you connect it to the kind of people that are putting their hand up saying I'm leading something and say, at the end of this week, you need to tell us like what is the tangible outcome you've got out of the week? Because I think that there's something here for me of like the people that there's one thing to say, like it's the people that are hosting open spaces, but I think that the thing with open spaces is they're fairly ephemeral. Like you can create documentation, but mm -hmm. I think that the people that are showing up that have existing kind of work streams or pathways or things that they're trying to forge ahead, I think the key point here is like, okay, well, what was the tangible outcome movement that's occurred after this week for you yeah. and so it might be a case of those individuals almost like doing maybe a little almost like a little mini presentation at the end like we we called them lightning talks in new zealand and you'd get like two minutes and you just had to basically like quick fire like what's what's come out for you and what what you've achieved we used to do it on like tech projects like as a way of quickly sharing information on the landscape and so you but you could use something similar to kind of almost as an exercise of accountability, I think. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's great. There's a, there's lots of also interesting exercises uh, to focus people's attention on that problem space. I think, 
Eco Cycle is one that would be my favorite because every group can create their own Eco Cycle and you can see how those things sort of compare and contrast. We might be able to think about our shared challenges, but there's also Anxiety Circus, which um, you know has this also very card-like, game-like design uh, uh, aspect to it, which is you know everybody writes down on an index card, you know a challenge, a situation, a, a something that keeps them up at night, and then we basically score those cards collaboratively and end up with a heat map. So anxiety circus is that one. And of course, it never gets old. I I get tired of saying it, but Triz always fucking slaps. Like, how do we create the worst dumpster fire, the most ineffective movement on the face of the earth in the refi in the refi ecosystem? And then we we brainstorm that list actively and then we take a sobering look of okay, what should that shit are we actually actually doing? And how do we stop doing that crap? You know? That ne that one never gets old. Um, when it comes to this intentions and setting spaces thing, I think there's a lot of interesting possibilities when you start to think about uh, purpose to practice, just in like really engaging in the space. What's our shared intention? What's our purpose? What are the principles that we need to follow to uh, pursue that purpose? Who are the people that we need involvement and engagement from in order to be successful in that purpose? You know, what are the, the structures that we need and what are the, the practices? That are going to help us uh, see that purpose come into realization. So that is a whole laundry list of stuff uh, that we've given Monty to think about. Why don't you come back, Monty, and tell us what you take away from this conversation, and we can give James a go. Yeah, I've been furiously taking notes, <laughs> and I'm very, very glad that I came because these are some incredibly interesting and useful ideas from people who have clearly been to these sorts of retreats and workshops before um and yeah i'm i i mean i particularly love this idea of the back casting one um i think that was mentioned a few times with different iterations of that as a one of the ways well actually i think i think first starting with um the intention setting um at the end of the week i'd like to have this um you know looking at the kind of people there and and some some of that kind of stuff um, and then, yeah, going into this back casting, I think is an activity to do early on where people can really think about, okay, like this is the big picture of refi and where we're all working towards and gathering, gathering a sense of purpose. And then I think that mind spin one comes in, which was sounded really cool to just start generating a load of ideas, um, there, um, and then going into the eco cycle, uh, regen coordination, which goes starting to bring it into a bit more, um, you know, practical of the different activities that are happening. Um, and yeah, I think, I think that, oh, and I guess the, the Triz one as well would also go with the future backcasting um, uh, potentially stuff because you're, I don't know, maybe, maybe that's a, a early one as well because it's kind of setting the big picture stuff of, of where do we not want to be going towards um, and, and stuff like that. Um so yeah, I, I'll need to look at these all individually, but I think, yeah, do you guys have any sense in terms of what order um, it, they should come in or um, I could share a pic, um, uh, my screen and show the kind of rough schedule or um, where else do you think um, would be good to talk about next? Um, but also just wanted to express some, a lot of gratitude for the expertise here um, and definitely gonna implement some of these great ideas. I mean, future backwards is a good thing to start with. Yeah. And by the way, future backwards, the way I described it, uses Triz. It doesn't say it's Triz, but I mean, uh, you're talking about hell, you're talking about hell. Yes. And you about how you get, you got to hell, which is an interesting proposition. Yeah, I like that a lot. It combines that both in one, which I think is brilliant. Um, I really like, I really like the future backwards stuff. Um, yeah, I think your flow in terms of directionality seems pretty good. Do you want to start with that that larger container setting where some form of scenario based exercise? That sounds like a really good good way to kick things off and give people a bunch of context. And then thinking about how they might be able to plug in and then compare their actual uh, real, actual circumstance with what uh, with all the insight generated it sounds like a damn good time. Um. I'm super excited to see what comes out. And of course, make use of Bruno. Like Bruno's a fucking 
champion. So he's going to be there. Oh, yeah. That's brilliant. Definitely, okay, so... definitely, definitely, definitely run Troika in one of your half hour opening and closing circles. As a matter of fact, if you just ran Sorry, Troika. Sorry, say that again. Day, Troika. Troika. Troika Consulting. Run Troika Consulting or Wise Crowds or whatever you want. Engage in some form of crew based peer to peer support. Um, what does that mean? Sorry. Uh, Troika Consulting. It's one of the liberating structures. Uh, I just can't spell Troika. I think. P R O I K A. Okay. Cool. Troika Consulting, liberating structure. Yeah. Well, cool. Awesome, Monty. I think that gives you a lot of shit to try and digest. Here a lot in, of stuff uh, in about a week. Yeah, uh, but I think you've got you've got some stuff. If you want to jam on uh, on your session in particular about your coordination, I think then we can jump into an additional session to get that done. I'm keen on keeping the 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 tempo moving because I want to see, hear from James about his situation and what we might notice is like some common pattern and how it might rhyme between the two of these different challenges. Um, Thank you so much, guys. That was amazing. Uh, lots, lots to look into. Um, grateful. So, James, you said that you had somebody on something with regards to Social Innovation Academy about how there was, um, there was. Plan, uh, planning this gala, which sounds in some ways like a very similar thing to uh, thanks, Amaya. Appreciate you hanging out, which sounds like a similar thing. So, can you give us a little bit of the context? What's the question, situation, challenge you're bringing into the space? Um, okay, let me try to do it as fast as possible. So, the idea is. Uh, So it's a hub. It's a hub and different companies, organizations share this hub as a co-working space. But we want to bring all these companies together to get to know each other in an informal way. Uh, it's kind of like, a, it's not like a work setting, but it's like a birthday party, but different companies are coming together to get to know each other, celebrate, showcase what each, each company has achieved during the course of the year. Of the year. Um, they could share how things that they are celebrating for 2023 accomplishments, and also look into what they are dreaming about come 2024 and the future. Okay, so that's the, uh, that's the thing. So how can we, um, I need to, do it to pull it off in such a way that it's it's a relaxed atmosphere, uh, fun. It has fun. Get to know each other, but with that goal, celebrating our achievements and also how can we look forward to the look into the future, twenty twenty one. Yeah, that's basically it. So I want to see how, what kind of liberating structures could help me achieve that. How could, how could we do it? Yep. Questions, is it? Cool. Uh, quick question. Is the co-working space um, collectively managed or owned by the companies or is there another company that is the kind of service provider of the space? Yeah, there is only one company that is a service provider. It's the Circular Design Hub. And is the is that the group that are facilitating the event? Yep. Mm. Mm. Okay. How much collaboration exists between the companies at the moment? Like it's it's very there's almost none. <laughs> So like everyone comes, they sit in their co-working space and just focus on their own goals, their own company, finish and leave. We tried to put uh, 
uh, community lunch where people, you know, can have lunch together in a specific space. Mm -hmm. But still, people get lunch and go to their offices and have from there. Like everyone is just other. Yeah. yeah, are the business owners coming to this space, or is it the workers only? The business owners and some workers. Okay. How many? How many are they? How many people? All in all. Uh, they're over two hundred plus. And and they and they and they use all two hundred use the space regularly. Yes, it's it's a warehouse, so it's a big, it's a big structure. It's a building almost. Yeah. Oh, okay. So it was a warehouse, but transformed into a, a hub. What's the so talking about dreams and connecting? Is there anything more like that's kind of what relates to my question around collaboration? Is that a tangible outcome you're looking for as well to kind of help the companies like help each other? Is that like yes. or yes? Yeah, okay. Yeah. You want to do one event or it can be several events? It's it's one event, it happens once a year, but this is the first of its kind. It has never happened before. We are prototyping it this year. So it's one day? Yeah. Actually, it's an afternoon from like three in the afternoon up to six. Oh, it's, a th it's three until the whatever. Yeah. Oh, okay. And then after the after the after six, there's a cocktail thing and there are meals around. Yeah. So it's basically from three to six, basically that that yeah. there's gonna be you would want something to to happen. Yeah. Okay, with the intention of of creating a um, uh, how do you say a, a, a spirit of um, of mutual interest and, mm -hmm. and yeah. okay. So we've got a we've got a relatively large group of people, and so two hundred people use the space. You expect them to all have to do a three hour long shin big. Is that about right? Okay. What you're hoping to accomplish out of that is that people get to know each other and we might be able to get some collaborations and just communication, it sounds like, in this uh, shared space where people normally show up and work on their own damn thing. Okay. Any other clarifying questions? Mine is basically on which re, have you set some resources for this event to be a success or maybe these organizations coming up, these companies, are they supposed to also make some maybe payment to be part of this or you have yeah. already set your, maybe yeah, your... Yeah, there's a contribution of about $50 for each, each company better for the refreshments so oh so sorry still clarifying questions okay um hmm, no i've got no more uh, is, is there is there in the back of anybody's head the idea that they could all work on certain projects together or not no so everybody's on but, but that's our desire so that they, the companies, that they would find some things maybe that, that, that they could sort of do together. Yes. Okay. Well, it sounds like we got a sense I... of the thing, James. Oh, oh, thanks, Nora. What's your question? Oh, yeah, I have a question. So I wanted to ask, do they super register as they, as they walk into the hub or the room or the space? Yeah. Okay, that makes work simple. Because um, I just have an idea. I don't know if it's a brilliant idea, but if it's possible that uh, you could get like tags, you mix them up, uh, people from different organizations. So you put tags on, on different chairs with each and everyone's name. So 
when you walk in, you know where you're supposed to sit. Knowing that you're all not from, okay, like the space you're going to sit in is, uh, you're, you're going to be mixed up. People from different organizations or companies. Yeah, so that uh, maybe they can get time to interact. Yeah, James, yeah. if you want to mute yourself and turn off your webcam, it sounds like we're ready to, okay. we're already pitching ideas. So I, I love the, what Nora is bringing in in terms of like, you know, the the killer app or the simple, the 15% solution is just help people get familiar with introducing each other to one another. And so that that's a, not a, not a weird thing that, you know, we're inter, we're just interacting across these, these sort of social groups. I've liked playing around with the game like dynamic with either lanyards of colors from different organizations and saying, Hey, no two lanyards of the same color, some shit like that. Um, you know, just getting people to recluster into a novel configuration. You know, even something as simple as like, you know, the, my, the most basic and my favorite is just impromptu networking. I just offer people a set of questions and have them interact in, you know, in one-on-ones with people they don't know in order to reduce that, the social friction of interacting with people they don't know. Anybody else? Yeah, I was thinking about, um, in the same vein, about appreciative inquiry. Because if, if appreciative inquiry is telling other, other people nice stories, and it would take about an hour, and... Uh, it goes one is it goes by pair by fours, and you can mix all the people uh, from the different uh, to the different companies, and it's a really lovely uh, way of uh, introducing yourself and 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 uh, and talking also about about success and and the and the way you you think of it for for your own uh, for your own um, company and things. So it's a great exchange. Yeah, the leaning into things, stories that we want more of in general is a pretty upbeat and positive vibe, right? Just yeah. hey, what do we what do we want this thing to be like? What is what are good happy times in our past that we would like this thing to be like as well? And how do we extract that that wisdom from the past narrative experience? Anybody else? Yeah. Um I think that so for a site a group this big for a time span that short, um I think big circling things are going to be very hard to pull off. The I, I went to a great uh, uh, tech security conference in New Zealand uh, a while ago, and they were really good at um, kind of creating gamification of the event. Uh, so was, they had things like uh, a table in the corner that had different padlocks on it that people that were interested in, uh, like, lock picking could go and try to play it with lock clicking everyone that came to the conference got an old tape on the lanyard and the tape had an encoded message on it and then some nerds went and tried to decode it and de like it was like a crypto puzzle um so i think like if you can put some things in the event that are like you could even do like a book swap uh shelf where people can bring a book and swap a book so anything that's kind of creating very light uh, things that are activities that not everyone's going to be interested in, but a subset of the people will be from different companies. You're creating different places that people can gather and like swap stories and just connect over a really ridiculous thing. Uh, I mean, you could even get board games and say, there's some board games in the corner. Nerds want to play board games, go play board games. Because realistically, it doesn't actually matter what you're getting people to do as long as they're breaking down the silos between different companies. So that's the one idea. The other is a bit more uh, it potentially interesting. I would, one of the experiments we ran inside in Spiral very early on was called Co-Budget. And it worked, we did it at a event that we hosted for 300 people called Open Source Open Society. And basically everyone that came to the event got, I think like $5. Uh, I, I, I like so that's in New Zealand that would be like the cost of a coffee so it, coffee money and everyone gets one of these tokens and then at the event you vote you, you people put proposals up and people vote with their dollars 
on space improvements that you want to make. So at the event for us, because the event was in a rented space, it didn't work so well. But because you're in your place, it, people could be voting for a new mural. They could be voting for a new coffee machine and they could act, they could vote for more plants. And then you actually go and spend the money and do those things. And then there's this shared sense of ownership. Like you, you're, you're decentralizing the, the feeling of ownership and empowerment over the physical space. And I think that that for a co-working space is extremely powerful. And if the experiment was successful at this event, it might be something that then the companies want to keep on doing in the longer term where the companies can kind of every quarter kind of put up proposals for space improvements and slowly the space feels more and more like owned by the people. And then that will create like pockets of collaboration and, and inspiration. Not a liberating structure, more like a oh. ha ha space hacking. <laughs> well, the liber yeah, voting with dollars is that, oh. a, is, that a, is that a liberating structure? I mean, that's a that's that's decentralized collective intelligence, right? Uh, coordination towards some outcome. I I think about in, in so the couple things come up. So one is like I I like the idea of like you know for better or worse like a fair right like a science fair like a school science fair like hey you know these different organizations why don't you just set up a fucking booth and talk to some nerds about the thing that you're working on and like give yourself an excuse that hey now that we've set up this con this container in such a way we're gonna we can more likely share about what are the different things that we're all just working on um the other thing that comes into into play when you're especially describing this like what i would call a, a governance challenge Right of how do we decide what it is that's worth doing together? Um, I like the I like asynchronicity around this, right? Because you know if we're talking about a big popping event, so let's let's say three hours is on the calendar. Actually, uh, you know people are you know you to put people to the to the task of deciding together um, synchronously is a challenge in that period of time. You know, to figure out some way of creating a whether it's a board with the eco cycle on it for you know people to put up ideas in the gestation phase, and to think about the the workflow mapping of moving those ideas to implementation and estimate to estimates as far as like, hey, this is my what might be how we could do that shit and put up different proposals. So I, I like some form of like physical artifact that enables that sort of idea collection, validation, and decision making process. Like, how could I create a wall that sort of uh, that becomes this playable game for us to do that thing, so that we don't have to sit around in a fucking circle and bore each other to death with trying to like you know spam ideas out there, but to to give people that those tokens to sort of vote where you know they can do it as the time is passing. And then as we come into the cocktail hour, we can go, hey, we can just like recap on what's there, so to speak. Um, that might be an interesting way in this like science fair thing. Um, um, anybody else? Yeah, I mean, I've got, yeah. <laughs> I'm just <laughs> getting ideas as I remember things. Um, I think, yeah, three hours uh, trying to use some liberating structures. I think like, maybe open space combined with fishbowl would be interesting where you had like four fishbowls going on simultaneously, allowing people to move between them. And so like mm -hmm. just trying to kind of, cause just 200 people in one fishbowl is just too much. It's in my opinion, it just sucks. But if you went and did simultaneous ones, it would be quite interesting kind of getting into almost panel like territory without questions, which maybe would feel familiar to people. Um, mm -hmm. I think the other one is we did some great sense making exercises in Spiral a few years ago where we got everyone in the room. We would like divide the room in by axis. So it'd be like the long axis and the short axis. And we would then say, do you feel like uh, optimistic or pessimistic about Inspiral's future? And do you feel like Inspiral's future is in New Zealand or overseas? And so then every, and then everyone would have to move where like where they felt in the kind of two dimensional uh uh lines if you like so you could be mm -hmm. i think i'm optimistic and i think it's overseas or i'm optimistic and it's in new zealand or 
And that was a really great exercise. And it was very surprising seeing where some people were and mm. seeing who was very extreme versus who was more kind of like medium. And so that was a really great exercise to do with a large group of people. And in fact, I'd say any kind of exercises of trying to or get like show by physical placement where you're where how people feel is a really great exercise i think the other the last idea i have is borrowing like the inspiral pods or micro solidarity cruise ideas one of the nice things you could do out of this would be try to form small like groups of people that exist for I don't know. It could be as long as they want, but the idea, maybe I would have said but from this event to the next, but that's probably too long, but like a group of four, three or four people that want to meet say once a month or something, and they just want to talk to each other and support each other and in whatever. And that's been, and it might not be that you get everyone, all 200 people participating in that. But if you ran around now, you might form some interesting crews which are cross disciplinary and cross uh, company. And I think that would be a very successful um, intervention as well. Yeah. Even if a small subset of the people across organizations want to continue gathering together, they can be the points of connection that continue to introduce other people together to, uh, across those organizational contexts yeah. with, their with their counterparts. So. The, key, the key thing is you need someone and this does come back to your fair idea. You need someone to be like the matchmaking facilitator. So, mm -hmm. so then you go and say, here is the matchmaking service for crews. If you're interested in a crew, you come here, you register, and then someone does the kind of yeah. legwork of shaping up the groups. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's great. Yeah, lots of good stuff. Yeah, and I think about like coming back to the impromptu networking or you know mad tea party, like some form of just like speed dating. <laughs> like it's also like, hey, would you like to meet lots of people from these different organizations? You know, sign up for these speed networking tables. You know, and gather people together so that they can continuously reconstellate. There's something in either almost like a world cafe style thing or like. Uh, it's a real stretch to think about warm data lab, but that stuff is super interesting, I think, as well, to create actual you know, complex adaptive systems in response to life and challenge. But I, I like the, the asynchronicity, like both separate stations where lots of shit are happening, that people can pop up into, and there's a lot, a large sort of diversity in there. And I really love this idea around like figuring out some form of governance thing to a thing because that can be both the decision making process but also the implementation can be kind of a, a an excuse to gather again across these different orgs hey if you are the if you are the, in the nerds of subgroups that decided we want a new coffee maker come form the coffee maker committee and decide which coffee maker it should be for you know together or whatever anybody else we're doing on time i should have just named i i, I... I think wise crowds would also works really well in this kind of a setting. And oh, yeah. especially if you've got people that are entrepreneurial that are kind of sitting with their own ideas, it can just be a phenomenal way of activating people and people getting advice that no, that don't normally get it. Um, especially if you get the kind of thought leaders or business owners acting as the consultants and then the kind of staff members from other organizations acting as the provocateurs. Yeah, there's a there's a, a version of wide crowds that's designed to be done with larger groups where you would basically start with an initial like client and you would put them up on stage with their initial con consultation in a fishbowl. And then you would have additional, you would invite people to splinter up into different groups and it basically either use some form of thinking hat, some form of a different lens to think and critique the the recommendations, you know, to say, hey, you know, how can you deepen it? How could you get more? How could you simplify it? How could you red team it and tell us why that's a horrible idea, what you would do in, in a different way? Or how would you look at it from all of these different perspectives? So 
that wise crowds for group processes is also an interesting way if between now and delivery, you can source somebody who does have a particular challenge that you'd really like to elevate. And in using that person's specific thing as the quote unquote third thing for everybody, it's nobody's particular project, but everybody has some familiarity about it. It always becomes that thing that we can talk about and that we can you know, sort of continuously coordinate around. You know? So James, why don't you come back and tell us what you took away from this consultation and uh, we will get on with this thing. Just a moment. Oh, James, cool. Me? Other James, give us your game, man. It, it will be another opportunity of ideation as well, my, to my opinion. Like I would think to make the event interesting, I was also thinking of like gather people in several tables, like several groups, and like some brainstorming exercises. And this technique is just about brain writing. Like you you give particular cards or papers to everyone in, in the particular tables. Everyone writes their particular ideas they have, maybe concerning maybe a posing question of given to them. Then the paper is rotated within each other person to add on that idea that other person has given. So that those those papers rotate on everyone in that table. So they will add their ideas on each every paper. So at the end of the day, everyone should have at least written an addition on someone's idea. It's just a brain, it's called brain writing game. Yeah, I believe to people because it's really a gathering, because it's it's one of its kind. So people, it's another way of I can say ideation. I believe yep. it could be another great opportunity during this event. Yeah, that is just yeah. Thank you, James. I think in the liberating structures uh, nomenclature, I think we call that uh, like 10 by 10, X by X writing or brain writing. That's the, the name that you would put on that, that procedure or that exercise. It could be a great one to help people mix up information, ideas, and, and vibes. Anybody else before we ask James to come back? Awesome, James. Why don't you tell us what you took away from this uh, consultation? Yep. Um, interesting ideas. I'm particularly in curious and interested in the fair, the concept of the fair. Uh, so like different companies set up booths. Uh, the question is, what do they talk about at the booths? That's the question. I also love the idea of decentralizing co-ownership. Um, I didn't hear well, I think because of the networking, oh, I lost network at some point. But what I heard was uh, from you, Dan, was like we get people to, in groups to give proposals about space improvement and then vote on that. That's what I had. I don't know that it's what you had suggested. That could be something interesting you could look into. You and wouldn't, the, yes. You wouldn't need to be in groups. Basically, anyone can put a proposal up, mm -hmm. and then at the end of the event, everyone votes with their kind of virtual dollar. So, like, the, you give everyone like a paper token when they arrive, and that's their their kind of voting money. But it's not real money. Like, it's only money for the for voting. But then what happens is at the end, you see which proposals got the money and then you actually go and do those things to the space. So the idea is to kind of crowdsource space improvements almost. Yes. Actually, when you are discussing that, the, the idea of crowdsourcing came to mind. That could be something. Let me just yep. take note of that crowdsourcing. Uh, then I love the idea of the fish balls happening like different fish balls like you have like four or five fish ball activities happening simultaneously that could be something interesting 
where we could be interview where the <clears throat> we could be asking the different company directors in each of those groups questions like that um wow this is this is awesome i love the impromptu networking an appreciative inquiry to explore the questions of what have we achieved in the past what have we achieved this year what's the future going to look like but breaking that down um then board board games definitely is going to be there i've even put like a big star on it um yeah then i didn't understand the idea of book swap uh, maybe I need clarification on that, but it sounds interesting. Like you, just you basically up. you put a shelf somewhere, and you get the maybe you get like a, some of the owners from the companies to give you some books. Like it could be marketing books, could be programming books. Just like it could be, you know, Steve Jobs biography, and you just put them on the shelf, and you tell everyone if you see a book you like, you can take it as long as you bring another book and put it on the shelf. So it's like you're swapping the books and, and that can become like a permanent thing inside of the space, like that there's a never ending book swap. Wow. 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 Well, this is interesting. I've seen it done. I've seen it done on the street in several European countries. Like you'll, mm -hmm. there'll just be like a cupboard mm -hmm. on the corner of the road and it will say book swap and you just open the door and there's books and you, take a book and it, it doesn't even have to be business books it can be non it can be non-fiction fantasy sci-fi it doesn't matter mm. and then you replace it with another yeah so the the it doesn't i mean once you've got enough books it doesn't even matter like people can just take the books but the idea in, in the beginning is that it's a swap you bring a book from home you take a new book hmm. interesting <laughs> thank you dan thank you everyone this this is super helpful i can't wait to share this with my team and get on this project looking forward to this. Thank you. Excellent. Well, nerds, that was this, um, what is it? October 23rd edition of the Wisecraft Design Call. Thanks to everybody for your time, attention, and energy. Here I'm helping out Monty and James with these uh, wonderful initiatives. James, if you can let us, if you can come back after, after the fact and let us know how this thing went. We would love to hear what you ended up rolling with and, of course, what you learned as a result of the experience. I will definitely. Dope. Well, nerds, I'm going to get back to this thing here. I'll see you guys on the internet. Okay. Bye. Bye. Bye-bye.